So what if you could have a high quality, easy to use, eight input interface for $500, $499? Well, apparently now you can. The Evo 16. And of course you can enter to win one of these lovely units. Just click the link below and follow the instructions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the song. It was all recorded through this. This is $500. So of course I wanted to try it out. Of course I wanted to know about it. We've done the Evo 4 and the Evo 8. And if you've watched those videos, you'll know that they have this smart game function, which is really super easy to use and gives you great results. Now, obviously an eight input device means that I can now record drums in my studio here using something inexpensive. I have an HDX system, don't get me wrong, but now I can go anywhere I want and take this with me and record drums. Better still, you can record on your own. So you could have a laptop next to your drum kit. You could have this sitting next to it. You could select all of the mics, set the smart game function, start playing, 
and then all the levels will be set and then you just go straight into record. Obviously the previous Evos were designed specifically for home studio people, but now with eight inputs, it's everybody. It's drummers, it's piano players, it's bands. I could do a band recording with this. A lot of times we do kick, snare and two overheads. So that's only four inputs. I could put in a vocal, bass guitar, electric guitar and piano. Do a band. I mean, the Beatles recorded on four tracks. They didn't get to eight track till much, much later in their career. So, you know, here we have an eight input device. It's really super easy to use. It's got uh, two JFET inputs as well as uh, mic inputs here. And as you know, or if you don't know, the JFETs are what has become the standard now for instruments because you can plug your guitar straight in the front and it just sounds better. Two headphones with two independent volume controls on it, which is fantastic. So in this situation, when I was recording Blair, we ran headphone extension out to him and I had the other pair of headphones so I could hear the mix. On the back, we have a word clock out. We have four opticals. So we have two optical ins and two optical outputs. We have eight line inputs, and then we have the remaining six mic and line inputs on the back. This is a badass thing. It's made of metal. It's solid. It's got some weight to it. It's 500 bucks, and it sounds really good. Download the multitracks, make up your mind for yourself. Now, the other thing we did, if you'll notice, is we used pretty much everywhere except for the lead vocal, very affordable mics. We use the Lewitt microphones. It's a few hundred dollars worth of mics, a few hundred dollars worth of interface, and we got great results. Let's go through how we recorded it. Now, obviously, if we're gonna talk about an inexpensive eight channel unit, we better use inexpensive mics because nobody's gonna be, well, maybe they will, but they've only got $500 to spend on an eight channel unit. They're probably not gonna have $100,000 worth of microphones. So we went with the Lewitt mics, we're using eight mics on the kit, so we're using every input there. We're starting off with the 040s, which are freaking awesome, and I can't remember, I think they're like hundred and something dollars for a pair, aren't they? Ridiculously inexpensive. Then uh, LCT 140 on the hi-hat, another inexpensive pencil condenser, obviously. Small diaphragm condenser. And then, of course, there's the NTP 440s, and we've got, these are, you know, basically their SM57 killer. We've got one on each tom, one top, and one bottom of the snare. So four inexpensive dynamic microphones. And then last, but no means least, we've got the Rex 340. So that's it. It's eight mics, a few hundred dollars for all the mics, and going into a $500 interface. And then really the rest of it's uh, Blair playing the drums. I think the single most impressive thing this is gonna do for guys and girls like us, is be useful for recording drums. Now, obviously this unit could be set up next to the drummer I and mean, Blair could have it, but which means it's gonna be really, really good for musicians working on their own. The Evo was predominantly designed with that in mind, something that an individual musician producer can use because obviously the automatic gain function is huge, meaning you could put it next to your drum kit, press all the inputs, start playing, and the gain will be set. But we're gonna demonstrate it here. So I have uh, Blair play. Yeah, it's gave him the wave to play. So it says, press the smart gain button to begin. Okay. It says the illuminate green and the input LEDs one through eight will begin to flash. Okay, they're all flashing. Press one or more of the input channel buttons to select the channels to be adjusted. So I'm gonna select every single one. It's got all eight, eight mics on the kit, of course. Press the smart gain button again to begin the process. And then it says the LED will start to flash red and the volume wheel LEDs will illuminate indicating the smart gain mode is now listening. Okay, so there it is saying it's listening. Smart gain successful, woohoo! So the way we're working here is we've got two sets of headphones. I'm not going through the speakers, I'm just gonna monitor on headphones. So he's got one set going through to him and I've got one set here. So I'll heal exactly the same mix as him. So this is a perfect example of one man band here. So I've got my Yamaha, my new Revstar. I'm going into my Fender Tone Master. I'm gonna print a DI and also a mic. We've got Phantom obviously for the DI. 
So I'm going to select the channels. So we've got one and two. And let's play. It's just going to be little lead parts and I gotta be honest, there's no latency. I hadn't thought about that. You know, as a guitar player, you wanna whiz around? We're normally with the cheap units, that's a complete waste of time, but no latency, no perceptible latency. So I've got set up here with the BB bass, which I absolutely love. Again, totally affordable. I can't remember what this one is. It's made in Indonesia. It's one of the cheaper ones. It's one of my favorite basses ever. It's ridiculous how good it is. We're using an expensive mic though. We're using the Lewitt 1040. We're gonna use it on vocals and on bass amp just because. This would be for those of you that want to hear the vocal on a nicer mic. But regardless, we could do this whole demo on just a dynamic. But we're having some fun. Okay, so again, I'm gonna set this up, hit the button, select the two. So one and two. And now I am going to start playing. There it is. Let's put some bass down. So Mikhail's playing some arpeggiated stuff. Let's get some level. So once again, turn it on. We'll select two, which is the input she's coming in on. And now it's analyzing her finger picking. Done. So we are throwing some money at this. We're using the Lewitt 1040 because I want to get a really good vocal sound and we've been using all the inexpensive Lewitt mics, but this one we're going to cheat on. So um, I'm rolling off a bit of low lows. I put this, uh, the high pass filter on 40, just in case there's any rumbles and stuff in the background. Um, okay. And I've got it on the warm setting, so it'll be a little bit, a bit warmer. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. So let's check out the tracks. This mix was super simple. Here's the kick. There is no EQ or compression on it, but what it is doing is it is triggering a plugin here called Bark of Dog. Um, I call it Bark of the Dog, but here it says Bark of Dog. It's a plugin by Boz Digital Labs. We've been using it on and off because we have a DBX120, and that is a subharmonic synthesizer. And because we're which is hardware, but we're mixing in the box. So here's a before and after. Here's without it on. Put it on. Okay, you can hear a massive difference in the low end. It's just, it's all low end. So what I've done is I've gone down to 36 hertz, which is what we do on the DBX120, and boosted quite a lot. Nearly 8 dB, 7.7 .7 dB. We'll go to the snare top, which was the Lewitt M. TP440 on the snare top and bottom. Um, what we did do is we took this same auxiliary, which is three, which is sent into the bark of the dog, and sent it to the compressors on the snare top and snare bottom. And you might be like, well, why did I do that? Well, I did it because every time the kick plays, it will actually duck the volume in the snare, meaning there won't be that excessive snare rattle. I'll, I will play it to you with and without. Here's with it on. Turn it off. This is the this is the kick in the snare. Now put it on. So do you see what we're doing? It's a great technique. Every time the kick plays, it's compressing the snare track. So that snare bleed just gets squashed down exactly with the kick. 
I love doing that. Now you can gate it, but honestly, gating is so much more finicky to do, where side chain compression is just awesome. It also helps the phase issues that might be there. So if the kick is bleeding into the snare top and snare bottom and is delayed and causing some, you know, some phase cancellation between the kick drum and the snare mics, that's now gone because now it's being volume automated out of the way. All right, next up is the hi-hat, which was the LCT 140 Air, and we didn't do any EQ. All we did was pan it over to the right a little bit. Great. Toms, didn't do anything to it. Everything was played so lightly, the bleed is pretty minimal. No EQ, no compression. Again, the Lewitt MTP 440s, and here's with the Toms. Last but no means least is a pair of 040 Airs, um, which are really inexpensive, and those are our overheads. It's the whole drum sound. Throw in the shaker, which was recorded under one of the overheads, and here's the drum sound. The only thing we did was add a little bit of reverb, stock reverb, the D-verb. Take that off. Without and with. Set to three quarters of a second. The acoustic, which plays right from the top of the song, is all I put on it was the stock Avid BF76, which is the Bomb Factory 1176, which is beyond stock. I've been using that since 90, blah, 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 whenever it came out. Here is the acoustic guitar tone. No EQ at all. At the moment, no compression. Compressor only starts to come in near the end here. Electric guitar, same thing. No EQ, no compression, just the BF76. But I am using the H3000, the Eventide, which has got a little bit of chorusing and delay on it. And then I put stock reverb at 1.7 seconds. Bass, only use the amp, but the DI is there for you to use as well. No EQ, no compression. Last, but no means least, is a wonderful vocal from Mikhail. Oh, no EQ, no compression on pretty much everything. <laughs> the bass amp, no compression, no EQ. Acoustic, just a tiny bit of compression. Drums, zero compression, zero EQ. Just the compressor to remove the kick bleed that's triggering the bottom snare and a bit of reverb. That's it. And a bark of the dog for that kind of boominess on the kick. Really, really basic mix. Well, of course, a bit of reverb on the vocal here. Um, but I wanted to do that because I wanted you to hear this. And of course, you can download these multi-tracks yourself and mix it yourself and hear what this sounds like. But once again, Audience have hit it out of the park. We're big fans. They've been making affordable stuff. The reason why we're fans of the company is we do these giveaways all the time, as you know. And we had a winner in Greece. And if you're not aware, um, Greece, unfortunately, does have very, very high import taxes. So does Brazil as well, and actually Australia on, on a lot of goods. And we've had winners in all of those countries. And one of the prerequisites when we're working with companies on giveaways is that they are prepared to pay the taxes because when we say worldwide, we don't want to exclude anybody. So anyway, cut a long story short, one of our grand prize winners a couple of years ago was in Greece. And Audient, um, I went back to them and said, they want more in taxes than the unit is to buy. So the lovely people at Audient said, you know what, we have one of our members of staff is going to Greece on holiday. So they flew over with it in their baggage Probably shouldn't tell this. So hopefully there's nobody from uh, Greek um, uh, customs and excise watching it. And then personally delivered it to the winner. That's why we like 
these companies. Everybody makes really good products. There's some great, great products on it. This one, of course, is very, very innovative. Oh, and I have to remember to say, they will want me to remind you, that the rack ears are available for free. So you can mount this to be a 19-inch rack mount as well. They just don't send it with it because if you don't need it, then they don't have to manufacture extra ones. But you can ask for it for free and they will send them to you for free. So without further ado, let's go over to our very good friend, Mr. Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios, who's gonna tell us even more about this unit. Don't forget, you can enter to win one of these lovely Evo 16s. So I've been testing and kind of beta testing and pre-producing the Evo 16 with Audience. And it's been a great process to go through. The, the little things have all been just like perfected over time. And it's been good that we've had the time to do that. Little things like um, the stereo linking of tracks so that when you do the smart gain, they don't come in at different levels. Say you've got a pair of overheads, uh, you can have them come in so that they're nice and even. The little details like being able to see all the levels on the screen and quickly flick through them and the, the little icons that come up on screen that are nice and clear, but disappear quickly enough that you're not like, come on, come on, waiting to get back to the screen with all the levels, which most of the time is probably what you're wanting to see. Some of the slightly unique features uh, I'm finding really cool, like the F button being set to talk back mode so that I could have, uh, say, a singer or a drummer or somebody in the other room and just have a hardware button for talk back. Uh, without having to have a separate monitor controller or anything for that, really useful. And smart gain for an entire drum kit or just all the channels all at once is something that I did earlier today. There's a little clip on screen here of me with a drummer friend. It took us literally two minutes to get all the levels perfect for tracking without him having to know anything about gain structure and gain staging, which really helps if you're not a super, super technical nerd like I am. The other Cool thing for me is that this is the most affordable interface that I've seen where all the gains and phantom power and all that kind of stuff is digitally controlled. And what that means is in the app that's on the computer behind me, I can have all the gain knobs and 48 volts and everything set remotely. So if I've got the Evo 16 on a really long USB cable somewhere that's kind of out of my reach, I'm not constantly having to get up to change things. I can change it all on screen and it's still analog. It's just changed um, by digital control so that the full analog signal path can be you know, tweaked as needed without me having to stop every five seconds and get up and you know do the physical twiddly thing. And things like that can save tons of time. I know there are other companies that, that do digitally controlled stuff, but usually the price bracket is four figures plus, you know, super expensive. So seeing that here, it's the kind of thing that really changes the way you work once you get used to it. So this is the song that I made for my Evo 16 video, which is kind of a drum and bass song, but all done with a band and all done with the Evo 16. Sounds like this. So I'll not spend forever going through the whole thing, but we did our drums in a very short space of time through the mics on the kit and I'll turn a couple of little bits off, but we used all eight channels of that uh, on the Evo 16 and it sounded a little bit like this. And at the same time, I had an Audient ASP 880 preamp bank connected to the Evo 16 with one of those optical ports. So I recorded uh, a bass DI and a bass amp at the same time. And I got this. Very cool. I then went and added a couple of uh, trigger samples to the kick and the snare because of the genre, but kept the actual kit and then went into the live room, added in bass distortion and a heavy guitar. Then I did another guitar. This is all using the instrument inputs on the front and a virtual amp. A 
And then I recorded four vocal lines uh, straight into Channel One's mic preamp, like this. Blend them all together and you get this. So yeah, anything's possible with an Evo 16. It's a very capable unit. Thanks guys, back to you. Thanks ever so much, Adam. Thank you everybody for watching. Please don't forget to download the multi-tracks. If you wanna buy this, I'm sure there'll be a link down there somewhere to get it. I'm impressed, I really am. I mean, it's 500 bucks, it's $499, it's 399 pounds, it's 469 euros. There's not really anything in this price range that competes with it at the moment. I'm sure lots of people will bring out affordable stuff now, but for an eight input, great sounding, great looking, really well built unit that can do stuff as good as this, I'm really impressed. Thank you, Mikhail, the artist, for singing. Thank you ever so much, Blair, for playing drums. And of course, we'll put links to them as well. So long, farewell, au revoir, au revoir, adios. Tschüss, ciao, tutsins, goodbye.